my god, in this video I'm playing against three players with the rating of 1900 and 2000 and I'm crushing them all in less than 20 moves. You gotta watch it. Let's get started. So guys, I have found out an amazing variation that I love that is called Black Knight's Tango. This is an opening that I haven't studied too much, I have to say the truth. But I love a lot the idea and it is like very active. I want to go immediately for the center with the movie 5 and support it with the knight. And once white is pushing the spawn, I will go with the knight towards this side so I'm ready to attack. And now this is like a dream because I'm taking your back and well, I'm attacking this pawn and two knights are developed so I should be having a great position. Now my opponent didn't play the movie 4 which I think was the best move. So I can develop here pinning this knight and then maybe playing the move d5 one day. Which would mean uh, that I get all my problem solved. I'm thinking if I should take or if I should push d6. Well if I push d6, knight takes, knight takes, queen takes, boom, 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 I cannot castle anymore. So maybe I will take because the queen here is not such a good piece. Yeah and also after knight takes, queen takes, can I play the move d5? Like saying, uh, I am the big boss of the center now. I think so. Let's go. We take and then we play this move because this little bishop is spinning this little knight. Okay, they take. Now, do we take with the knight or with the queen? How do we take back? Look, I don't like to trade queens too early, but I have to be careful because after knight takes, there is a check here attacking this bishop. The bishop is protected by is protected by the knight, and I can simply develop my bishop to defend the check. So that's actually good. And there is a threat. I want to take here, pawn takes, take here, and give a fork to the king and the rooks. That would be amazing. Yeah, my opponent gives a check, but now I can play the intermezzo move. Well, not really intermezzo, but I'm just pushing a pawn and attacking this bishop with tempo. And my next move is going to be like knight out, bishop out. Oh, oh, oh wait, 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 wait. My next move is going to be knight takes. Okay, now they gave another check, but the problem is that after bishop here, I'm thinking if I should play queen here, because if I play bishop here, my opponent can move this away, and after knight takes, they can take here. But if I play this, after being boom, this is hanging. I'm going to do that. I will play queen here, and my opponent is in big trouble. There are too many problems. That's why you have to be careful about the intermezzo moves because they are dangerous. My opponent uh, didn't defend this problem and went for check, but I went for the move c6, which is mean, which means I'm attacking this bishop and this threat still stays. So my opponent has to defend two things at the same time. Now I'm taking gear and again, one in two points needs to be defended and this bishop is light square, cannot defend something on the dark squares. So that's why this is a great position. Guys, like this video, if you like this opening, I'm basically winning in 11 moves and I will make a video dedicated to this opening, how to play, all the tricks, all the ideas. Okay, uh, I will take here, that's great. If my opponent takes here, I take this bishop. If my opponent takes this knight, I'm taking with check the king and the rook is hanging. Now we have an extra piece, so what do we do? We simply develop all the pieces and we are simply winning. It's a, it's crazy that at this level they don't resign. Uh, well, in my previous video <laughs> I got to 1900 with a piece down. So everything is possible in chess. Now I want a pawn. I want a pawn. Uh, can we protect this guy? Maybe we can't protect that. Ooh. Okay, what are those noises? Let's attack just the uh, Bishop trying to take some time to think what we want to do. <laughs> okay, we'll just play rook here, you know. And after a rook there, we say, fine, you took a pawn, but we are going to trade the rooks. Yes, I'm going with the bishop here, and I want to trade your rooks, sir or ma'am. Yes, now we trade, and now I go with the other rook. And I'm saying it again, wanna trade? Because if they don't trade, okay, now they will trade, and I go here. In this position, I can nearly remove everything nearly okay so let's go with the knight here i want to give this fork and win a piece now we'll go with the knight here i want to trade the bishop now i'm attacking this bishop and i'll take here 
and then I'll take here and then I'll take this pawn and this is you can really resign here yes nice win and also like very fast new game we're again with the black pieces but this time my opponent is playing the move e4 I don't have such a fancy move against e4 but I'm playing e5 which is very solid now my opponent is playing the Vienna Gambit I think like Gotham Chess made a video that is super popular about it so um, lots of people are playing this opening. What is the idea? The idea is that um, you want to play the move f4 at some point. So you delay the development of the knight. Because you don't want to go on f3 blocking the pawn. But maybe you want to go on e2, you know, supporting that knight. Now what do I do? I do a spicy move. Knight to a5. I am not following the opening moves. The opening rules. <laughs> because I'm attacking this knight. Uh, sorry, I'm moving this knight a second time. Uh, but because I want to take this bishop, because bishops are so important in open position. And, and I will take that guy, but not immediately, because I can take it at any moment. So I'm just developing now. Um, okay, and now you can see that basically my opponent played the idea, their idea. They went for the move f4, but, 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 um, I mean, this diagonal is quite weak, quite weak. Okay, I'm taking here. Now, this diagonal is also quite weak, so you have to be careful because all these moves are kind of double-edged and you could be in trouble. For example, I'm thinking, what if I go with a knight here? I mean, I'm threatening some big things like, you know, sneaking gear, sneaking on F2, some, you know, some big boys thing. Not sure if that move is good. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Whew. I mean, the sacrifice doesn't work because I take with the king and even if the knight goes here, this knight is protected. So it should be all right. Anyway, I think I should take there at some point. Uh, I think rook here is the move that my opponent has to play, but then I could take here this and then go with the knight there. My opponent has to take and then I have a giga child bishop. It's true that after all this, this knight can, be can take there, but I think I should have a check here then taking. There's a pawn hanging, but... Ah, there's this pawn also hanging. It's like very complicated, but I think at the end of the day, I'm the one having a great position here because this king is starting to be a bit weak. So every time you play the move f4, what? Wait, I'm taking here. So if my opponent takes the bishop, well, I'm taking back and I have an extra piece. And if they take here, first of all, I have check, but I can also go with the knight there. But I mean, not really good. Okay, I will go with the check here then. Yes. The king moves away somewhere. Yes, and now I go with the bishop here. I want to trade and go with the knight on e3. <laughs> That's a um, very clean idea. Okay, we take here. Now the queen will take, of course. And unfortunately then, we don't win. Woo! What? Look there. I think that's a mistake. Okay, uh, I think the idea is that they want this bishop to feel uncomfy but this bishop feels very comfy here protecting the pawn uh, this pawn is now weak double pawns this king is is not having a fun time i have the bishop area in open position this is a dream a dream position okay they are pushing i can simply take and i win another pawn but you know what i'll just develop i'll just develop pinning the knight and then i will take there later on i don't have any stress Okay, they are going for this, but they are giving they are doing me a favor because they are opening up the F file and I'm going to take that pawn. Yes, baby. I'm going to do a castle, castle next. There we go. And now the rook is looking at the king and saying, Hello there, wanna be wanna dance with me? And the king will says no, but uh it will be forced to dance with me. You will see. <laughs> the king has to dance with me. Okay. Um how to go on? So the king is trying to hide. That's what we we can see. I will go with the bishop here. You know, this bishop, uh, sorry, this knight is pinned by the bishop. And the, my dark square bishop is controlling those squares, meaning that the king cannot go on the queen's side. And what about the sneaky move queen here? Uh, because this knight cannot take. And then I go here and it's really looking great. And I will do this move anyway. It seems like, oh no, my queen is hanging, but my queen is not hanging. And I'm going here for the sneaky moves. Well, my opponent is holding, controlling all these squares with the queen and the rook. So what do I have to do? In this case, 
you have to bring your last piece into the action. And the last piece that is not playing is this rook. So we go here, we are ready to double. Okay, I allowed this move, this was bad. Okay, I have to go back. I had to play a rook here, simply. I had to go to play a rook here. I didn't have to allow this move with tempo. That was a slight mistake, but not too important because the position is still very, very much winning. Mm -hmm. Ooh, my opponent is connected. I don't understand why people don't like to resign. You know, you can resign. Okay, we won all these games really quickly. Less than 20 moves per game. Let's try to do the same for the last one. <gasps> Why are you playing a 2059? This is a strong guy. I mean, not gonna lie. Okay, let's play our tango again. Let's see how it goes. Okay, we play e5. This is the idea you want to go for the center. Now, usually white should push. And this is what my opponent is doing. Very smart idea. Now, e5 usually is what... Uh, e4 is what usually you play. Just getting a very nice center. And my opponent is playing the move d6. Okay, but uh, cannot I take here? Because after queen takes, I move my knight away and I'm having uh, a great position. I go with the knight here. I'm, I'm protecting this pawn, attacking the queen. And uh, I guess I have good development here. Now, I will play bishop here because we are pinning this knight again. And the move d5 is what I want to play. Yes, my opponent is playing this move, which is very smart. Now the question is, can I play this move or should I wait? I will castle first and then play this next. So after d5, pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes. Ah, I'm not sure if I can play because it doesn't work. No, after bing, boom, bam, boom. Yeah, it doesn't work. So if I want to play d5, okay, maybe I can prepare it. I can play d6, bishop here, and then d5. Um, rook here also looks great. What I like of this position that usually, of this opening, that usually against d4, you don't have like very active defenses, you know? Instead, this one, I mean, it looks really fancy. I really, I tell, I tell you, if this video gets to 200 likes, it's possible, put a like, come on. Uh, I will make a video about this opening. Yes. Um, what do we do here? So I want to push d5, but I will attack first this pawn. Uh, just to make my opponent feel a bit uncomfy. Now we push. Because now it's really nice. Because, you know, this knight is also not protected. And if pawn takes, we could even take here. <laughs> Which is really nice. And after pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes. We can take here first. Queen takes and we take. And uh, uh, we traded all the pieces. We have a pawn in the center. We have better development. So we are better. We have a better position with the black pieces. Now we have an extra option. We could take here with the knight or with the bishop, but we could also take here because we are also attacking the rook. The point is that the bing, boom, bang, not such a big deal. So I will play this move. I will just take here. All right. Now, if I take with the queen, I lose a piece. So I have to take first here with a check. Oh, my opponent took with the knight. I think they want to push this. They want to push there. I mean, it seems like the only reason I will take with the queen. The queen is strong in the center of the board. I'm uh, looking at the pawns if this bishop goes out. But guys, I think I can very well say that we are at move 15. And I'm better with the black pieces. Which is a huge, is a huge uh, accomplishment. Okay, simple development. If I take here, my opponent wants to go with the bishop there. And they want to say to my queen, hello there. I still have this move, um, but I don't like that too much. So I might simply play rook here, yeah? Uh, but then my opponent goes for this, and then I go for that. <laughs> and then they take, and I go with rook here, and I'm completely winning. Yes, okay, let's go. Rook here, looking at this knight. Now, my opponent cannot castle, because if they do castle, well, they lose a piece. The knight needs the protection of the king. After bishop there, I go with the king, with the queen here. I'm blocking the king. He castled. If the bishop goes back here, then I can go with the move in another square just to avoid the repetition of moves. My opponent still cannot castle. Okay, now bishop there. Um, I will go with the queen in another move. I think, I mean, I'm I'm thinking about which one would be best. I think like this one is more active. Yeah, this looks more active because after after knight moves, I also have a check possibility. Which actually wins a queen, so it's quite, quite nice. And I'm not really worried of my opponent taking there. 
because I can uh, attack the bishop and then go with the rook here and I have three pieces looking at that knight and I don't think you can defend it one more time because the rooks cannot, the bishop cannot and if you move the knight away the queen is just protected twice so that would be really really bad for my opponent this pawn is a poison pawn Ooh, 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 queen there. I see what I want to do. I mean, they still cannot castle. I mean, still they cannot. So after f5, trying to get rid of this bishop, because I would love to go with the rook here. They have to go, like, here on b... <gasps> oh, and then I have the rook, my rook sliding to c1. That's so nice. Oh my god. I mean, the bishop cannot go here, cannot go here. Has to go there. Well, I mean, if it goes there, it's checkmate, so... Where can the bishop go? And if the bishop leaves this diagonal, uh, so goes here, well, first of all, I could trap the bishop, but the most dangerous thing is that I can go with the rook on the c2 file. And this is what I'm doing right now. So my opponent has still the option to play rook here right now. But, so, we have to keep it going. I could take here. That's fun. But I could also, like, um... I mean, this is good enough, because my opponent cannot castle, cannot protect this, they cannot do anything. So I took a pawn, which seems like, okay, you just took a pawn, but it's not just a pawn. Because, um, after, well, if the knight moves, first of all, I can take here, after being boom, bang, all the trades, I have this move, meaning that I win this rook. And so my opponent cannot move the knight. And my next move is going to be actually after, no! Oh my god, I nearly pre-moved that. Okay, all good. So after knight goes here... Um, I can also take here with check. Actually, the knight cannot really move. Now, bishop there. Uh, I, I want to take here. Can I? Well, there is a check here. Oh, that's a smart move, maybe. Because after this, the queen is taking. But I move it away. So the queen needs to go back here. Then I can push and maybe bring the knight. Or maybe push here. Everything is quite fancy. <laughs> um, but I could also... Wait a second. This is just hanging. <laughs> I just realized that that's just hanging. <laughs> well, test masters, to realize the things in a couple of seconds. I was just faking it for con, just to see, guys, if you saw it. Yes. Oh my god, that's so cool. Wow, I hope you enjoyed this crushing games. If you like, you will win also in such ways against 1900 and 2000 Hilo. I promise. Thank you so much for watching. Check out this video. Bye!